Hello everyone. Um, so today we are going to start practicing identifying the different types of epithelial tissue. So Friday you guys did the um, integumentary and um, histology stations and I'm going to go over the answers for that as well um, briefly. And you guys also read about epithelial tissue and filled in a graphic organizer and I'll show you an example um, of one here in a second. So after that you will do the epithelial tissue activity. So the handout that you read, you're gonna fill in the table and then do the practice at the bottom. And then for Thursday, you need to read about connective muscular nervous tissue. Just like you did with epithelial tissue, you're gonna, you are going to just read the background information for both and then fill in the graphic organizers for both. Okay, so Friday, we did these stations. Um, and here are some sample responses from um, this. So you could have had different answers based on the structure, and that is okay. But these are the correct answers. So one is epithelial tissue, occurs in layers, connective tissue, and there isn't really a set pattern for structure for epithelial, or excuse me, for connective tissue because they are so diverse. Muscular tissue, so you could have said something about like the bands or um, the uniform cells for contraction. And then for the nervous tissue, this is a neuron here, um, which lets us know that is nervous tissue. So we will learn how to identify these over the next couple of class periods. For the membranes, um, so this was just copying from that slide. We need to know that the mucous membranes line the digestive, respiratory, urinary, and reproductive tracts. Serous membranes are the body cavities close to the exterior of the body cutaneous membrane, that's your skin, and synovial line, your joints. Okay, for station three, you guys looked at different um, exocrine glands. So the sebaceous glands, those are the glands um, that secrete oil, so acne, or sometimes when you um, have like greasy hair, oily hair, that comes out of the hair follicles. Sudoriferous glands, also known as your sweat glands, and you have two different types of sweat glands. You have eccrine and apocrine. So eccrine, those are that's the sweat that keeps you cool when you get really hot. Apocrine glands, those are the stinky glands that produce stinky sweat from your armpit. So like BO um, is that type of gland. And then the third one is, is pronounced it serumious, and this is earwax um, found in the ear canal. So those are the three different types of exocrine glands we need to know. For the layers of skin, this is the correct answer here, and you will be asked to um, label a cross-section of a different model of skin on um, the summative. So we need to know this anatomy. The only thing weird here, so this band that attaches the hair follicle to the basal cell layer. This is called the erector pili muscle. And this is the muscle that contracts when you get goosebumps. Also the subcutis or the subcutaneous, that is the same thing as hypodermis. Um, that is the same terminology. The last station you guys looked at the applet on edumedia. You compared the sensory receptors on hairy skin versus hairless skin. So essentially what I wanted you to get out of this applet is that hairless skin have a lot more nerves in the dermis than hairy skin. But the hair follicles that are attached to those nerve endings, that's what lets us know um, when we sense our environment. Sorry. Okay, so when you get burned, um, on your hands, the palm of your hands where you do not have any hair, a second degree burn on the palm of your hand would actually be classified as a third degree burn because of the amount of nerves you have. Very, very sensitive. And the last couple questions, so comparing the anatomy of the two types of skin, we need to know from the, your answers in your table that the hair follicle with corresponding nerve endings and the erector pili were located in the hairy skin. Hairless skin had a thicker stratum corneum, which is the epidermis, but there were also more nerves in the hairless skin. Um, later on when we do the unit about the senses, we're gonna do something called the two-point touch. You're gonna notice that skin without hair is much more sensitive. You can, you can feel the difference in pressure and the difference in number of points than um, skin with hair. And that's because of the number of um, nerves. 
And then the last one, which, um, sorry, I skipped over two, which type of skin had more touch receptors should be hairless skin. And then most sensory receptors are located in the dermis, but some um, are in the hypodermis, which is the same thing as the subcutaneous layer of, or sub um, subtus layer. Okay, um, next up, you guys read about epithelial tissue, and you filled in this graphic organizer. So here's the students that I just randomly screenshotted. Functions, we need to know that the epithelial tissue, um, mostly for protection around your organs. Um, that's also where gas exchange happens. So we're going to look at some cross sections of um, alveolar tissue, which is in the lungs. Secretes substances, so those exocrine glands that you guys looked at at the stations, those are present in your epithelial tissue. And they also provide sensation with the environment, like you guys explored on station five. For locations, they are found in nearly every cavity. So this is a common misconception, misconception that epithelial tissue is just your skin, but that is not true. They cover a lot of cavities in your body. Um, and then also function as glands. Um, so a lot of you guys did this this single layer, and then you said pseudostratified stack layers with a dead tissue. I think this was just, um, wasn't very clear on the reading. So what I wanted you to put in this orange box, a single layer is just called simple, and stacked layers, that is called stratified. What's really cool about epithelial tissue is that you can tell exactly what it looks like based on its name. So if you're good at picturing or um, figuring out the shapes, what's going on with the shapes, you will be able to name it. So again, single is just a single layer, or simple, excuse me, is just a single layer, and stratified is a stacked layer of cells. And then there are also four types based on shape. So there's squamous, which is Greek for um, fish scale, because those are flat, irregular cells. Cuboidal, which are cubed shape, not perfect cubes, but they look like a cube or a square. Columnar, which look like columns. And then the weird one, transitional, which we are not going to include on our practicals. I'm going to take that one out. So when you put those together, for example, simple columnar, that is a layer of single column-shaped cells. Or stratified squamous, those are layers of flat, irregular cells. Okay, so moving over to classroom, a few things in here. So this epithelial tissue identification activity, you need to do this first. And then you can work on the connective muscular and nervous tissue readings with the graphic organizers, just like you did for epithelial tissue. So first, let's look at this one. You can now type in this handout. So you guys read about tissue practicals. Um, few key pointers when you're identifying tissue. Look for patterns. Uh, remember that form always follows function. So if you can identify the patterns, the shapes, if they're stacked or not, it will be easier for you to identify the tissue type. Don't memorize, especially if you're looking for color, because these look different based on um, how they're stained. So don't just think, oh, the purple cells, those are simple squamous, because they might not be purple on the summative. Look at the shapes. You guys read about epithelial tissue, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so these tables, this is what we're going to start filling in. For each of the epithelial tissue type, you're going to write a short description. So I'm going to show you where to find that here in a second. Please shorten this and put this in your own words. Don't just simply copy and paste. That's not how you're going to remember. Same thing with the functions and locations. Some of them have several functions and several locations. Just pick two or three that you'll be able to remember for the practical, for the summative. And then this big, spot, big box, this is where you're going to write about identifying factors. So what makes this tissue look different from the other ones? If you, were try, if you were looking at a tissue sample, how could you identify this one versus the others? So think again about the name of the tissue. So simple squamous, look for a single layer of irregular or flattened cells. So you're going to do that for the rest of them. Skip transitional, which was letter F. And then after you're done taking notes about the different tissue types, epithelial tissue types, here's some practice. So these are black and white pictures. Look at these pictures. They're also at the bottom of the um, slides. And then you are going to type in this box what you think the name of that tissue is. 
We will review those first thing Thursday. Same thing with this image, so a little bit clearer to see because these are cartoon depictions. How would you name these tissue samples? All right, so then while you have that doc up, you are going to look through these PDF slides. So this tells you the description. So say, again, don't just copy and paste this. Read it, shorten it, put it in your own words. Pick two or three functions, two or three locations, and then look at the actual microscope picture. So this is a cross-section of alveoli, which is the tissue found in your lungs. And tell me how you would describe that. So for example, I might say super thin layer of squished cells or flat cells. And then for this one, same thing. These are simple cuboidal cells. So again, they don't look super cube-like, um, like seen in this picture here, but they do look more cube than um, squamous or columnar. One tricky one I want to talk to you about, letter D, the pseudostratified columnar. A good way to identify this one, if it has cilia, it has to be pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue. So if you see these little hair-like projections, it has to be pseudostratified columnar. The prefix pseudo means fake or like not really. So pseudostratified, it might look like it's stacked um, in layers, but it's not. So if you look at the nuclei and they look like they're a mess, it's probably pseudostratified. So finish those up. Here are colored versions of the practice ones at the bottom. If you want to look at those, practice identifying. And again, we will go over these Tuesday, or excuse me, um, Thursday. All right, when you are done with that, you need to work on the, where did it go? Um, the graphic organizers for muscular and nervous tissue readings. So read about connective tissue, read about muscular tissue. These are a lot shorter than epithelial. And then same thing that you did with epithelial tissue. They, they, there will be two graphic organizers. So read about connective tissue, fill this in. That'll make sense when you read it. And then for the muscular and nervous tissue, looks like this. So I tell you the types, and then you simply fill in, is it voluntary or involuntary? Where is it found? What does it do? All right, and then again, this needs to be submitted before class on Thursday, and I will go over the answers with you. And then um, if you have questions, feel free to email me.